Hundred effortlessly great content without wasting your precious time. I know you guys are all busy realtors and have tons of other things to do besides creating content. So I'll make it as simple and as easy to implement all this AI stuff. Uh, before we get started, let me take you back in time a little bit. So back in May 29th, 1953, uh, Hillary and Tenzing were the first people to ever climb Mount Everest. Before that, hundreds of people have tried to climb Mount Everest. Many have failed, many have died, and many thought it was impossible until they did it on this day. And from there, three years later, Switzerland became the second expedition ever to climb Mount Everest, and it sparked the chain of other people. And it kind of just is one of those stories of everyone believed it was impossible, and so one person got it going, and then from there, that sparked the chain, and now people travel Mount Everest, Mount Everest and scale Mount Everest every year. And so for me, I mean, we all have mountains that we have to face in our lives. And for me, I'll tell you a few of them. So this is not me, actually. This is back <laughs> my 21st birthday. And around this time, I was at a crossroads in my life. I was at this point where I had a lot of things going on, but nothing was working out for me. I was in real estate, as Trisha mentioned. I got in, I'm thinking about being realtor of the year, selling top, all the houses, rookie of the year. I'm going, I'm hungry, I'm getting after it. I'm getting all the whole trainings, and I'm in the pivot ship call. And genuinely, I believe that I was going to be the best realtor at my age, in, or any age. In my office, first year, that didn't work out too well, right? I only ended up doing, what, three rentals in 2022, right? And on top of that, I have this podcast, right? We just did episode 132. But last year, I was dropping episodes every week consistently, not missing, not missing. And just like in real estate, that didn't work out too well either. Uh, either. My, my numbers were going down. My podcast wasn't getting any exposure. And then on top of that, I was working at this restaurant job. I had the restaurant job. I worked there three years. Thank God I quit two months ago. Finally was able to take the entrepreneurship thing in. But last year, my goal was to quit in March. And like everything else, that didn't work out too well either. <laughs> okay. So I got all these things going for myself. And I'm hungry. I'm young. I'm ambitious. I'm like, all right, I'm going to get all these things going. And nothing was working out for me. I was in this downward spiral. And I just couldn't get out of this slump, no matter how hard I tried. And so for me, I ended up getting on one of these calls. So... Mark King and Rebecca Rose, if you guys don't know, uh, they host a wealth building call every Friday morning. And I think they do a mindset call on Mondays, and I started doing their Twitter recently. But I hopped on one of these calls, and I believe it was actually the first call I hopped on with them. And Rebecca was doing a solo call, and she mentioned this book called The Perfect Factor. And so I'm a deep thinker. And so I read this book, bought it on Amazon, and soon as she talks about it, and I just started thinking about my life. And I started reflecting, and I was like, all right, I've been teaching these social media classes. Right, my first class had about 440 people sign up for it. And I thought another class had 400 people sign up for it. And then from there, I was like, all right, I'm already teaching this social media stuff. Let me turn this into a business, right? So I was going to create content for realtors and pretty much do the whole thing for them, the editing, the posting, all that stuff. And I worked with this one guy. He's a good friend of mine. He actually was on my podcast, too. And I was sitting in my bed, and I was just creating the content for him. I was putting the captions on the screen. And I realized I hated that, too. So that didn't work out either. Right. So now let's say I tried to say that didn't work out, right? I tried the podcast. I mean, I'm still doing it now, but at that point last year, everything was going downhill. Rest of my job, didn't enjoy working there, not making no money. And then this golden idea, right? Million dollar content creation business had to scrap it out too. Right. So now I'm at this downward spiral all over again. And so January 5th, I went on a little bit of a podcast tour. Uh, I got interviewed a little over a hundred times between January and March this year. Um, this guy, he runs a mastermind. Now, it's called the Spear and Flow for Mastermind. That's the other right there. But in his mastermind, it was about 400 something a month. And I was like, all right, first month, I got it, right? <laughs> Every month afterwards, I'm not sure if I got it, right? So I was on defense of whether or not I should join. And after that, like pivot shift, early birds, all these other calls were all free. So I never was in a paid mastermind before. And on top of that, I'm working at the restaurant. It's a slow season. I'm not making money for all the other things I've got going on. And I'm at this point, like, should I do it? Should I not? And I was really on the fence, but thank God I decided to invest in it. And in the course, in the mastermind, he had a course on how to use ChatGPT to create a course. And so around that time, I was just using ChatGPT for my podcast episode titles and the episode descriptions. Like, nothing too major, nothing too fancy. I was just messing around with it. ChatGPT came out in November of last year. It was still relatively new, not as many features as it has now. So I watched it, and in the course, I was like, this is genius. Like, how do I use this chat GPT stuff and bring it to my real estate people, like Patricia was saying earlier, right? So I hosted a class on chat GPT for realtors. About 90% of this presentation was created with AI. 
I virtually did nothing for this presentation. I'll get into it a little bit deeper later. But from there, um, that's when I realized I started doing a lot of research. And it's called, this little chart is called the Fusion of Innovation. All you need to know here is this chart shows how people adopt new ideas into society, right? So back when I first taught the class, here's where we were at, right? This little early adopters phase. No one really knew about ChatGPT yet. It was still pretty brand new. It wasn't a household name. It wasn't too many users, right? And now we're at this point where virtually, mostly everyone knows about ChatGPT now. It's starting to get a lot of buzz. It's starting to become more and more of a household name. More people are starting to get familiar with the tool. And ChatGPT, just for a little bit of context, so TikTok got 1 million users in 29 days. Facebook, which has well over 3 billion users now, it took them three years to hit 1 million users. It took ChatGPT five days to get the 1 million users. And on top of that, now we're steadily approaching 200 million users. And now they get about 1.9 billion monthly visits every single month on their website. So this is starting to get more and more popular. More and more people are using it. And my biggest fear, and I can't stress this enough, my biggest fear is that you guys end up in this last portion, right? The 16% the laggards, right? These are the people who, for whatever reason, never want to get with the time, right? They still have a flip phone. And they're, 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 they're still, you know, right? they're just, whatever, for whatever reason, they just don't want to get with the time. And the biggest thing with AI is the speed up, which is changing just in January, was an early adopter phase. And now, as I said, this already has mainstream use across the world. And with AI, the speed at which it's moving, the people who don't adopt it, they're gonna get left in the dust, right? And so for me, the vehicle is to 10X your business in the next 12 months with AI. Right? Whether it's for content creation or for ops or whatever it may be, but AI is going to help you get there. Right? And there's not a single person in this room that I can help 10X with the use of, the, of AI. And so I want you guys to repeat after me. I'm going to get a little bit engaging here because I don't want to just lecture you guys. It's already, uh, what, Tuesday afternoon, evening, after a long day, right? So can you guys repeat after me? Can you get a little bit of engagement going? Yes. All right, so repeat after me. I commit, I commit that as soon as I know that artificial intelligence is the key. Is the key. The 10x my online presence. So the 10x my online presence. I will go all in. I will go all in. All right, perfect. Now that you guys committed, I got your word right. This is recording. It's not camera. I got you guys. Let's get into it a little bit. So this is what all in looks like, right? This right here, boring little Christmas decoration. This right here, all in, right? All in. This right here is a very, very, very old kitchen. Like this probably like 18th century, right? This right here, masterpiece, right? Mm. This right here, boring conference, boring event, right? This right here, they got a little going a little bit, a little bit of engagement. This right here is us at Elevate. I think if I'm not mistaken, I'm not somewhere right around here. This is what it looks like to go all in, right? So I want you guys to be all in. Tony Robbins says, if you want to take the island, you got to burn the boats. This AI stuff isn't something that you just dabble with in your you know, free time. Like, this is here. This is going to change everything. So I want you guys to go all in on this technology. Because whether we like it or not, it's here and it's moving very quickly. And the people who know how to use it are making tons of innova innovations and the people who aren't, are not gonna know what hit them. Like social media, everyone says you gotta get on social media. Yeah, but there's tons of successful people without social media brands, right? No, it won't take too long before AI start taking over a lot of things and really shifting everything if it hasn't already done so, right? So a little bit, uh, a little late, let's see. Quick exercise, right? What's going on with this slide? There we go. Watch you guys do a quick exercise really quickly. If you guys think about really how much time do you spend per week on your real estate business? If you just have a rough estimate, right, you'll get a number, let's say 40 hours a week, right, on your real estate business. And then you kind of your GCI last year, let's say you made a hundred thousand. Let's say you worked 50 weeks, 40 times 50 weeks, you get two thousand hours and divide your GCI. Uh, 2,000 hours, you get a rough idea as to how much you make per hour, roughly, right? The reason I'm doing this is because if you save one hour per week using chat, you say, how much is that over a year? How much money would that save you? If you save two hours a week, if you save five hour, hours a week, and later on in the presentation, I'm going to teach you some stuff that really streamlines this entire process so that you can use chat, you can see not only for content, but for literally any and everything you can think of. Um, so a little bit about me, um, my mission is to help realtors. I pretty much 
keep their marketing in-house so they can focus on growing their business and impacting more lives uh, without losing focus, right? A lot of times we have all these other things that we have to do with real estate. We have to manage our transactions. We have to do our listing stuff. We have to help our buyers. We have to go show properties. We have to do all our marketing, right? We have all these things on top of that. We still have personal lives that we got to balance. So we have some of things. So my goal is not to add more on your to-do list, but to really take a lot of it off using this AI technology. And so what is AI, right? So if you can think of AI like a traditional robot, um, it's kind of like a microwave, right? So with a microwave, you just tap a couple buttons, boop, 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 put the food in, press start, it heats up, that's it, right? It's programmed to do one thing, one thing only, nothing else. But we have to be smarter than that, right? Because as we're all real estate agents, we're all business owners, right? The secret to doing more is with AI. AI is kind of like a chef, right? How many of you guys here cook? Okay, quite a few guys. So if you put a little bit extra salt, too much seasoning, that doesn't mean that the whole meal is screwed over. Uh, you could still save yourself and end up making and cooking up something good. Kind of like with AI, right? With most robots, whatever they're programmed to do is the only thing to do. they can do. But with AI, based on what you give it, it can make kind of decisions on its own and cater what it's got going on to what you're doing. So it's a lot more personalized and it can, even if it messes up, you can reiterate it a lot easier than having a simple machine like a microwave to the only just one job done. So after about a year and a half of playing around with content, making videos, teaching all these classes, I learned the hard way. So this lady right here, her name is Katie Steckley. I follow her um, IG, I listen to her podcast, I watch her on YouTube a ton. And she's a very successful social media influencer. Rule number one in marketing, right? Don't take marketing advice from someone who isn't a marketer. Right? Too many times realtors take advice from people who are in real estate. That's the same thing as you taking advice on how to sell your home from a physical, right? <laughs> You're not gonna do it, right? So I have to get a lot of advice from her, but here's what she charges directly from her website. So for Instagram and content management, it's 1500 a month. For a YouTube channel manager, 2000 a month. To do the video editing and thumbnails, that's another 1400. To work wherever TikTok, that's another 2300 almost, right? Up front, that can run you about 7200 a month if you want to hire somebody good. Now, she has hundreds of thousands of followers across multiple platforms. And that's what a good social media person costs. If you want to hire someone fresh out of college, probably going to cost you about 50000 plus all the payroll taxes and all that stuff that you have to do to set up an employee, right? It's a lot of money to hire someone good. That's about 86000 a year that you would have to pay, right? But in this presentation, as I said, I want you guys to keep your marketing in-house so you don't have to pay that kind of crazy money and still create some good stuff. So secret number one, I'm gonna teach you guys how to transform your AI into a Swiss Army knife so you can use it for virtually everything. I'm gonna teach you how to become infinitely creative because most of us, we have a hard time getting started and generating ideas. So I'm gonna teach you how to create more ideas than you know what to do with it, right? And then secret number three, how to never use a marketing agency ever again. So you never have to pay 500, 600, or a thousand dollars a month uh, to these media agencies to just post Canva photos on your business page and get one like. Um, and then secret number four, so yeah, at the end. But secret number one, how to transform your AI into the design of that. Quick question. How many of you guys hear any of these doomsday headlines like AI is going to take your job, AI is going to take over the world, chat GPT is going to, you know, take everyone's job and destroy their industry? Like, these media companies, as you know, their main job is to make you fear, uh, scared and to make you confused. And that's how they sell. Just like when their interest rates hike up, just like how they talk about the buyer, you know, home supply, their job is to just make you scared and nervous and make your consumers, the people your clients they're working with, scared and nervous as well. And if you take anything away from this presentation, the only thing you really need to take away is AI isn't going to take your place a realtor using AI well. If you remember anything, this is going to be the thing. AI isn't going to take your place a realtor using AI well. Right, so as I said, many of us are wearing all of our own hats, right? We're doing the listing coordination and the presentations and the appointments and the sales calls and the lead gen and all this stuff. We're doing everything, right? And you take all these trainings and it's a lot to keep up with, right? And so ChatGPT, it can help you with literally everything. So back to what I said that ChatGPT January um, seminar I taught. So here's how I actually used it. So ChatGPT helped me create that entire presentation that I said, tone.app. You guys want to write that down for all you guys that do home buyer seminars or seller seminars. Tone that app generates presentations um, based off a of topic you give it. So I went on tone that app, right? Yeah, T O M E dot app. 
and it generated the base baseline of the presentation from the right. Yeah, T O M E dot add. Then I went on ChatGPT and I had it create ideas for slides. So all the content on the slide, I had it then come up for me a bit, right? Then all the images on the slide too, those were automatically created with value. Now that's for another topic for another day, but all AI generated, right? And then on my event by page, right? I use Mid Journey, which is another AI tool, um, to create this image, right? Then on top of that, I use ChatGPT to create the description, the, the headline for the event, right? I use it to create the description for the event, right? I use it to create the emails to get people to register and show up on Eventbrite. All using What's chat the app again? Huh? What's the app again? Tone.app. Cool. Yeah, T-O-M-E.app. Um, so you can use ChatGPT for virtually everything. Content ideas, video scripts, listening presentations, listening descriptions, emails, whatever. You can use this for virtually everything. Like, when I mean the things are endless, like, you can't even read the font on this. Like, there's so many use cases. For all the stuff we use chat GPT for, right? We use it for almost anything, as I said. So here's where you want to start writing stuff down. I'm gonna give you guys the easiest framework that I found to start making prompts on chat GPT. So you want to think of race. R A C E. Number one, what is the role? So when you're using chat GPT, right, you want to ask it what role are you giving it? So you can say a video editor, you are now a master content specialist, you are a real estate agent. You are a mortgage attorney or a mortgage lender. You are an attorney. Whatever role that you need help with, you can have ChatGPT act as it is, it's that specific, specific role, right? Another thing, and I'll get into this in a little bit. I have like little breaks before I go into each section. Um, another thing that you can do that's a little ninja that I like doing is I'll tell ChatGPT to be a person. So let's say I need help with marketing, right? Someone that I follow in marketing is Dan Kennedy. It's a big time old school marketing guy. I say, you are now Dan Kennedy, right? Now, instead of saying you are a social media marketer, I'll say you are Dan Kennedy. And sometimes I have it create something and then I'll tell it, now, if you were Dan Kennedy, what would you think about this, you know, whatever it created, right? You wanna give ChatGPT a role. ChatGPT is fed on billions of data points, right? Giving it some type of role helps to give it the right framework to analyze and generate a response to what you need help with. Right, so that's the R in race, right? Step number two is what is the action? So what are you actually using ChatGPT for in that prompt? Is it to create a listing description? Is it to create an email? Is it to create, this one is pretty straightforward, right? What's the actual action on ChatGPT too? Is it to write a bulletproof offer? Is it to write uh, the listing description, um, the event write description? And what exactly do you need to write? This one's pretty straightforward, right? No ninja tactics here. Um, third one. Give it some context. So when you're giving it context, now ChatGPT doesn't know who you are or what you do. So you want to tell it about who you are and what you do. And I'll show you a great way to save time so you don't have to do this every single prompt. Once I thought um screen sharing the presentation and like about 10 minutes or so or five minutes. Uh, but give it a little bit of context. You know, who are you? What's your mission? Who do you specialize in helping? You know, how long you've been in the business? Give it a little bit of details as to who you are and what you do and who you're looking to work with. Right, because that way ChatGPT can cater its responses even more to what you've got going on and what you're looking for help for. And then E is expectation. What are you looking to get from it? Right? If you're creating video script for ChatGPT, is it to generate more likes, more comments, shares, more leads, more referrals, more top of mind brand awareness? What are you expecting ChatGPT to help you with? What are the goals that you expect the ChatGPT to um, help you accomplish with whatever prompts? You need help um, that you're using, All right? So that's the four step simple framework: right? race, role, action, context, expectation. All right? Simple framework. Even if you don't know how to use ChatGPT, nice little framework to use whenever you're writing any prompt, right? And this works for anyone: agents, brokers, lenders, your VAs. If you have an assistant and admins, and they're not using ChatGPT, they gotta they better get with it because they might lose their job really soon. So you gotta make sure if you have an assistant. They're on this stuff because this literally works for all types of people. So for my YouTube videos that I got going on, I have to create the YouTube titles, I have to create the YouTube descriptions, I have to create the YouTube scripts itself. Just for I use ChatGPT for all that stuff. For my podcast, as I said, I had to create the titles and I have to create all the podcast description for me. But for this, I did a what you guys would call a client appreciation event. So for my podcast, I did a celebration for my hundred episodes. 
So I got about, I think a little over 50 people, a couple of people left um, early. So we had about 50 people in this uh, photo. I use ChatGPT to plan the event, plan what I should have for apps, plan the emails to get people to register, plan the email to get people to remind them to come, plan the, the registration page for the RFP. ChatGPT helped me plan this entire event. And from what you can see, pretty good turnout. Can't complain, right? ChatGPT helped me plan this entire thing. Now, I know what you may be thinking, right? But John, like, how does this apply to my business? I don't have a podcast, right? I don't make YouTube videos. I don't do events. How does it apply to my business? The reason how is once you learn how to work ChatGPT, you could apply it to anything. And now, I'm pretty sure this is my first grade. Yeah, so remember, AI is going to save your place. A realtor using AI will. So I'm actually not my screen share because I don't want to lecture you guys in two hours. That's a little boring. So I'm actually about to open up ChatGPT now live. And I'm going to show you guys pretty much how to use it live. So quick disclaimer, because I know people get confused. OpenAI.com is the mother company of ChatGPT. And they created ChatGPT. A lot of other companies use the same ChatGPT software. So have, um, it's called an API key and build off of it. So if you look up chatbots or AI or stuff like that, you'll probably see a bunch of it. Most people don't have their actual AI um, chatbot. They're just using the ChatGPT software because you can pretty much pay to use it and build your own thing off of it. Um, so if you want to use the official ChatGPT, openai.com. And then from there, we'll say try ChatGPT. We'll do that, create a free account. ChatGPT is free to use. It should never, pretty much, you shouldn't have to ever pay for it up to this point in time. It's free to use. And um, from here, I'm gonna need some help from someone in the audience. So I'm gonna just guess the number one to 10, go first person is gonna to volunteer to help me out. So number one to 10, starting now. Two, three, seven. two, two seven. So one to seven. 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 Okay, perfect. So you mind helping me out? So here's what I need help with. <laughs> I think you uh, you know, just give you a little bit of that idea. So what's one thing in your business right now that you might need help with? Anything? Um, always need leads. <laughs> Want to generate more leads? Yeah. What's your main need to try to do? My SOI. Oh, okay. Right. So. I'm gonna tell ChatGPT, I'm gonna use it using the race format that I just talked about, right? So I'm gonna tell ChatGPT, you are now a master real estate agent. Sometimes I just get have fun with it, right? Master real estate agent with years of experience helping people buy and sell houses. Boom, right? So that's fulfilled the article, right? We gotta give it a role, right? It's a master real estate agent. I could always say you are Gary Keller, or you are Tom Ferry, or you are like Brian Surian, or some other big agent. Um, ChatGPT on a free plan though is limited on information up until 2021. So if they were big before 2021, I mean, or after 21, 2021, you, you probably should be someone else, or just give it a regular role. Then for so it's a three point five, the free is four is a, the yeah. paid. So 3.5 is free. I'm on the paid plan. So I'm gonna do everything today on the on the free plan, right? So that there's no excuse not to use ChatGPT, right? So I'll get into GPT-4 in a little bit. But um, in 3.5, that's the free plan is available for everyone. Right now, A is action. So you said you wanna generate more leads. So I'm using your free sphere of influence. So I want you to help me create a marketing campaign for my sphere of influence. All right, so now that fulfills the action part, right? Now context, who do you specialize in helping? Buyers, sellers, investors? Sellers are the investors. I specialize in helping people sell their home for top dollar. Home for top dollar. And I want expectations. I want to generate more listings, right? Boom. All right, boom. And now we're going to start coming up with slides. Let me scroll on a little bit. There we go. So, boom, just like that in seconds, right? Now you have things to go through, right? Define your target audience, right? 
create a compelling brand identity, build an online presence, leverage email marketing. And now you start getting tons of ideas. Now, we just did one for Sphere's Influence. You can do this for virtually anything that you need it for, right? If I need help with, you are now at a, a event planner. I need you, I need your help um, creating a client appreciation event for the end of the year or for Halloween and Thanksgiving or a gratitude event, right? You could use it for virtually anything. And the beauty of it is that you could also then have it, can you help me with part one? And then go even deeper on one specific part. And so now we're creating a market, um, a, a target audience. Now to help walk you through the whole process of creating a, a target audience, right? So segment your sphere of influence, analyze the demographics, understand the psychographics, right? And it'll just keep on going with you and they'll help you walk through that so you can start getting ideas for how to use it. All right, so that's the race format in, uh, in action. I also created a prompt. So you guys will all get this at the end. I have a list of best, like best chat GPT prompts, right? And I said, I'll keep this guy to all you guys. So you guys don't have to worry about like taking photos or anything. You guys are all gonna get this. I have this prompt called the Godfather prompt, right? So the, what that prompt does, it, it's a prompt to help you create prompts, right? So the, we use chat GPT pretty much against itself. So in this prompt, it said something along the lines of, you're a prompt creator, the goal is to help me create the best possible prompt for my needs. The prompt will be used by you, ChatGPT, and you will follow the following process. Step number one, the response will be to ask me what the prompt should be about. Right? Step number two, based on the, my input, they're going to give me a revised prompt, a suggestion, and questions. And then step number three, we'll continue this until I say I'm finished. So what the prompt actually says, don't really worry about it too much. As I said, I'm going to give this to you guys, you guys can copy and paste it. I want you guys to kind of understand how my brain kind of processes when using it though, so that you guys can understand how to use it. Um, so back to chat GPT, right? If you want to create a new chat in the top left-hand corner, there's a new chat button. So what we'll do is we'll copy and paste the prompt, right? And then it's going to ask you, what should the prompt be about? So now we're going to use that same example, right? I want to get to I want to get more listing leads from my sphere of influence. Boom. Not a fancy prompt at all, right? I didn't follow the race format at all. You don't have to with this. And what it is is in seconds, and now it created a revised prompt for me. So you might read that. I'll read it for you guys. So it says. Mind you, the first prompt was, I want you to get more listing leads from my sphere of influence. Nothing fancy, right? Not a well-written out prompt at all. Now the revised prompt is, generate strategies to increase listing leads from your sphere of influence. Very ba basic upgrade, right? And then at the end of it, it's gonna ask you questions and suggestions. So I'm gonna go through these questions. I'm gonna just go through one round of so, so, So I missed something. So yeah. what, did, what did you input before you uh, this? Put in, the, the oh, you, you put that in? Yeah, I just copied and pasted. Oh, Did it okay. change anything? The prompt is already created for you guys to do. So just copy and paste and put it into ChatGPT. Then it said, what should the prompt be about? You said you want to get more listings from your sphere of influence. So I just, that's exactly how I typed it in. Didn't follow any framework or format or anything. Just typed it in just how you thought about it. Now I'm going to ask you some questions. So let me ask you these questions because this is how you would use it, right? Do you have any specific preferences for communication channels um, for how you reach out to your sphere? It's like text message, phone, email. How do you normally reach out to your sphere? All of those. Okay. Which is the main? So, I mean, if you want to have a main. Let's say email. So let's say number text. one, question is answer number text. one, email and text. <laughs> right. Then number two. Are there any resources or tools that you prefer to use when you're reaching out to these people? Command. Uh, so I'm going to say CRM because I don't even know about command. <laughs> it's not that smart. But there's a loop around everything, right? Um, and then are there any particular aspects of the fear, uh, for your sphere of influence that you feel that you could be leverage, that can leverage more uh, effectively? Like friends or family or events. Events. 
Is that okay? Boom. So we don't have to get too thought out, right? So now I went from generate strategies to increase listing leads, right? So now it has generate strategies to increase listing leads from your sphere of influence using email, text, CRM, and events. And it'll just keep going back and forth with you. And the more context you give it, the better it can personalize with you. So if you gave me a little bit more um, stuff to go off, I would just throw it in and we can just keep on going back and forth and it'll never stop doing this. Um, and so you say, I'm finished. So then once you say, I'm finished, right? It'll you go back to the revised prompt. You copy it. You open up a new chat. And then now it'll create something that's a little bit more personalized and catered to what you wanted to do originally, right? And so, and then you can go deeper. So it says using email, it gives you some ideas for emails, using text messages, some ideas for that, and utilizing your CRM, it gave you some ideas for that, and hosted events, it gave you. So every time you do a new chat, though, it loses the context. So here's where it gets good, right? Well, so in terms of the conversation, yeah, right? But in terms of you, so as I said, in race, step number three, right, to give you context. That gets tiresome, especially if you start using chat GPT often, you're not gonna tell it about your business over and over again every time you start a new chat. So if you see a bottom left hand section where it says my name, if you click on that, the settings will pop up, right? So this little bottom left hand corner over here, this will be the same on your screen, the settings will pop up. And then it's something that says custom instructions will pop up, right? Custom instructions. And this is available on the pink band as well. With custom instructions, right? There's two boxes. In the top box, you got 1,500 characters, so you can write quite a bit. And you can pretty much tell it all about your business, who you are, who you specialize in helping, how long you've been in the business, um, things that make you unique, your unique value proposition, all that stuff. Just feed the chat GPT as much information about yourself that you're willing and comfortable to share, and you just put it in the top section, right? And now chat GPT saves and stores that. So anytime you start a new conversation, it's already trained on your business and what you have and what you do, which makes the whole process easier. So you're not trying to tell a life story to chat GPT every time you write a new prompt. You can also, in the bottom section, you can help kind of cater how chat GPT responds. So if you like when chat GPT responds in like long paragraphs, you can type that in. If you like when it's more bullet point and concise and to the point, you can put that in here. If you're someone that speaks in a little bit more of a casual or funny tone, you could put that in. If you're someone that's more direct and serious or Latin or you're a luxury, right? you could put all that stuff in here. So you could pretty much help chat GPT refine the way that you want it to respond. My question. question, on the free version, yeah. I'd be able to yes. designate between two different profiles, say. So like I, I use chat GPT yeah. for real estate, but I also use it for my full time stuff. Okay, so then you can just, in the, I said, you have 1,500 characters, which is like a good amount of sites. So you can tell it about both okay. um, if you want to, or have it specifically focus on one and then for the other one, just manually type in the context. So okay. you what, did, what did you, because I'm, I have a chat GPT. I, yeah. I don't see that in the settings. So if you go to the bottom. Oh, line, custom instructions. Yeah, there you go. It was a separate thing. Okay. And, and so, so that's pretty much like a little loop around. That way you have to, every single prompt, um, keep on typing this over and over and over again. And then once you type some stuff up, all you have to do is hit save. I mean, all you have to do is hit save, and then it'll automatically save. So when you start creating conversations, um, you pretty much have it already started. So any questions here before I move on to part two? Okay. So yeah, I kind of need some basic here. Um, yeah. So when I do, because I've used it before, and when I type in stuff that I wanted, it brought up this whole little conversation thing. Yeah. And I just typed what I saw into what I was trying to get it into. Yeah. How can I, how can I bring this information over to my? Copy. But when I cop, when I hit copy, I mean what? Okay. Where do I go to get the information back? I mean, the transfer it to another. The transfer it to like. So what I normally do is I transfer it to a Google Doc and then from the Google Doc I'll just transfer it out. But sometimes when you format like ChatGPT when you copy and paste, it'll format it um in this weird little format. 
sometimes though, depending on what it is I'm transferring over to, I just copy and paste that link Google Doc, and, uh, and then from there, copy out. So you just go to Google. Yeah, no, you, you, I'm not on chat GPT. I just highlight it. You highlight it. Okay. Copy, and then I either up post it to a Google Doc, or if depending on how it's formatted, sometimes you know, shows a little wonky. Um, just post it over there. It depends. Either way. So how do you get the Google Doc? I don't know, y'all. I'm so not tech savvy, and you know it, John. I've said it. Yeah. Go on Google and type in Google Docs. Oh. And then. And you have a KW email, so yeah. no excuse. You all have Google Docs. It's your already Yeah. Um, with the the Godfather prompts. Yeah. I feel like that could be a little bit of a rabbit hole. Like, how do you know when you're to type unfinished? When you don't feel like answering more questions. <laughs> I'm, I'm so serious. When you do Whenever it's like, all right, I don't want to type anymore. I think this is pretty good. Like, because I'll if you actually give it some context in the first round of questions, you shouldn't really need to go more than two rounds. Okay, like, that was that was kind of my yeah. question. Like, how how deep do you need to go? Yeah, I'd say two, maybe three. Like, depending on how fancy. Like, I have one prompt. And I'll get into it later. Um, that's literally like two pages long. I like, just one prompt itself, and I'll show you guys how I did that. But um, yeah, let me get through a little bit of simple use stuff first. But I usually go about like two iterations and then use it from there. And then whenever I get a really good prompt, I just put it back in my Google Docs, so I could just have a a library of all my best prompts to use. Right. Professor, when you do a new chat, new yeah, chat, do another new chat, new chat, does it it's overlay it overlays like the chat before that, so that information is gone. Yeah, so so for each chat, so let's say in one chat I was talking about like how to create a marketing campaign for Instagram, mm -hmm. and in another chat I was talking about how to make uh mailers for absentee homeowners. Mm -hmm. Like it's not gonna remember the conversation from an Instagram chat. So what I do is. If you see this little button here on chat, you can see next to the conversation. What I normally do is I just edit the name. And so whatever I need chat GPT for, for that specific conversation, uh, edit the name, that kind of helps me keep organized. So I'm not trying to go on these all these different rabbit holes that which chat that I talk about that one thing. Mm -hmm. so that's how I kind of keep it organized. Gotcha. When the custom instructions. Yeah. So if you're just if you're utilizing that, how do you bounce back and forth to go? Do you have to go into custom instructions, copy that, to bring it back to the race? Once you set it, it's it's in. So it automatically knows where to mm -hmm. fill itself in. Yeah. So you only do it one time. So I, what I would do, honestly, mm -hmm. is I would just get ChatGPT, open up a new conversation, and say, hey, I want you to interview me on my business to get a deeper understanding of who I am and what I do. Have it interview you, and then copy and paste all your responses, because after you like yes. kind of sync through, right? <laughs> Then and then put it into the custom instructions. So you don't have to reinvent and, the wheel. Exactly. And then after that, you can delete the conversation thread and, you know, um, get rid of it if you want. And I think I have one more question. I think. So I, I saw something I was reading in the special instructions or the whatever it said. How how would you like Chef DBT to respond? In one of the last bullets on the thought starters, it says, to Chef DBT have opinions on topics or remain neutral. I thought that was really interesting. Chat yeah, DPT yeah. now has opinions. I mean, it's the company that programs it has, has opinions. If you're a, not into politics at all or whatever, but Chat GPT has a bad tendency of swaying left a little bit. So well, just be sure. warned if you if you want Chat GPT to get into politics or whatever, you could use it for that. You know it is a little biased on certain topics. Um, but that's the American. I'm not into that stuff, but right? uh, I'm here for content, right? Um, but let's get into part two of the presentation, right? So that was how you use ChatGPT for anything, right? You can either use that little race format, role, action, content, expectation, right? Just to create simple little prompts for whatever you need it for. Or if you wanted to create like a more complex prompt, let's say you have like a big event plan and you want to make something like really special, use the Godfather prompt to make a really like special catered prompt, um, custom prompt for you, and then. Use the Godfather prompt for whatever you need to create the prompt. So that's step number one, right? So step number two, let me make sure that I can present how to become infinitely creative. So as I said, most of us don't have, you know, I, most of us have an issue figuring out what to say. And I'm using the whiteboard here um, in a little bit, but it's hard to come up with ideas, right? That's usually the part that stumps a lot of people and why a lot of people don't get into creating content at all whatsoever, right? And so most of the influencers, that's funny because I actually have the things that uh, the another camera, but 
add the, the microphone on the, on the um on the camera, I have the same one. But most influencers they make it look easy, they make it look fun, they make it look like yeah, I just hop on, you know, press my camera on and and boom, life is good. Right. And uh, most of us know like that's not the case at all. Like this social media stuff is stressful, it's time consuming, it gets on your nerves, you get burnt out, you start making a video a day, and after three days, it's like I'm I'm done for the year. Right. So we all have to carry this big border of like trying to make sure our brand gets out there to more people, but then also managing the day to day of our regular real estate tasks. But right? it's hard to do that carrying all that weight. The social media is a full time job, right? And so here's where it started for me. So on the left hand side, I literally just hopped on a Zoom recording and screen recording myself, and I was talking about how I got my real estate license. All right? I didn't have any fancy captions on screen. I didn't have any fancy edits. I didn't have an editor. I didn't have a camera. I think I use my laptop camera and I have my old Xbox headphones in this video right? and a, a little mic. Like that's all that I use, nothing fancy. And I'm literally screen recording my screen on my, my laptop. Nothing special at all. And I got about 300 views from this and like 30 likes or something like that. Then it started to get a little bit better, right? This is like the first time I post a reel, right? Or I think the second time. I ended up getting 4,000 views. And the caption is when you call the same expire since, uh, <laughs> since New Year and they say never call again. <laughs> And I think I'm listening to like some Drake song, Drake and Future. Uh, and that ended up getting 4,000 views. I got a little bit, you know, a little bit of uh, likes and engagement from that. I got 100 yeah, likes. That's the way you look. I refuse to Save all the hitting from the crap after the presentation. <laughs> but um, then from there, I thought you really get it going. I started really creating content. And so this video, I think, is five seconds long. And it says, I wish I bought um, when interest rates were below 3%. And I found a trending audio. This video ended up getting a uh, catch and algorithm pretty well. I got about 44,000 views on this one, 200 likes, 10 comments, five, uh, five shares, and seven saves. So this is probably like on my personal page, my best post. And what you guys don't see is the a little over an hour that was spent trying to find this audio. <laughs> what you don't see is the then all the takes that uh, I did recording it. Then you don't see the time I spent creating of the idea to like make sense of the audio. So a lot of these audios. It's like stuff I learned from other, you know, I hear from other people using it. And I try to figure out like, how could I spin this off and make it real estate later. Right? You also don't see the hundred of videos that I posted before this, right? There's a lot of work that goes into the social media stuff that doesn't get accounted for. Right? And so the old way, you have to, you know, learn all about the algorithm. You have to pretty much do all the thought planning, the creation and the editing, all this stuff. And it's really old, barbaric way of doing everything. But AI, what it's doing, is that the barrier to create content and to get into content creation is getting so and so low because AI is doing more and more of it for you, right? And so the old way of creating content, spending all this time and just spinning your wheels, you're getting really outdated really quickly. So now there's a new and better way, right? It's using AI. So step number one, again, this is where we're gonna write stuff down before I start to so I'm gonna teach again, and then I'm gonna get into showing again like I did in the last part. All right, so get your core topics, right? So People call these pillars, whatever you want to call them, but the core things that you talk about, all right? I'd say get about one to three things that are real estate related that you want to speak on, all right? So it may be, right, interest rates, maybe down payment assistance programs in Atlanta, and it may be on um, what homes, what, you know, what you can get at what price points, right? And do a little, little home tour videos where it's like at five, five, 500,000, you can get this home, right? And do a little home tour, like, what are some of your core topics you want to talk about? And then add about one to two personal topics. All right, the reason you want to do that is because nowadays everyone wants to create content. Everyone sounds a lot exactly like it, right? So that personal topic is going to help you identify, you know, differentiate differentiate yourself from everyone else. And it's a people business, so showing that more personal side of you is going to help you create more and more content uh, that resonates with people, right? and it's going to help you stand out a little bit. And then step number two, I'm gonna hop on a little bit of soapbox here, just because I think this part is really skipped often and people just want to get right into creating videos uh think of your target audience right most of the times people get into creating videos creating content and it's like oh i just want to make marketing content i just want to make videos i just want to get on youtube and don't think of any plan as to who they want to talk to and when you think of like these billion dollar corporations like apple amazon you, you know all these companies they don't post anything unless it goes through an entire department right not just one person not just a random idea. They have an entire department to make sure everything that they do clearly speaks 
the people they want to speak to and represent the band, the brand that they want to present. Right. So I'm gonna show you through a quick framework, right, that I use to pretty much play out this stuff. I'm gonna take you through a little bit of some bad drawing. Right, because I cannot draw, I'm not an artist. This is a bit of the way. You guys can see me a little bit. All right, boom. All right, so again, I'm not an artist, so bear with me. So I can see we got this over here. We got this over here. Right. So if you want an idea for as to who, how to create your target audience or who you really want to help. We're gonna have this imaginary person here. And we're gonna give this person a name. We're gonna call him Fred. Fred is a first time home buyer, right? This is Fred, the first time, first time, right? Never bought a property before, right? So Fred wants to buy a home. Fred doesn't know how to buy a home. Your, your target audience that you wanna reach out to has three things that are holding them back, right? They wanna be over here, and there's this big gap in the middle that they don't know how to bridge. And so they're over here and they're sad, right? Sad, Fred. So the first thing you wanna do, right, is problems. Should give myself more space, right? Problems. What problems do first time home buyers have? Right? They probably don't have enough saved up to buy their home. They're probably not making enough income. They probably have student loan debt. Their credit score might not be where they need to be. They never bought a home before, so they probably don't even know how to buy a home. They probably don't know. Who to talk to first? Do I talk to a lender? Do I talk to a realtor? Do I just go out to the open houses? They don't know the steps of the process, right? What problem is your target audience facing, right? If you don't understand this, then you're just pretty much creating content, hoping that it lands and hoping that someone needs it, right? The second thing that you need to know, right, is questions. Boom, questions. What questions is your target audience asking? What questions are they looking up in YouTube? What questions are they typing into Google? So when you ask what questions they're asking, well, then it just makes it easier. If you know what they're asking, you're just going to answer the questions. Now it's not what do I post today, it's which question my answer, right? It gets a little different. Now here's taking a step further. There's multiple steps, and we're going to keep on going with Fred, but the first thing we're buying a home, right? Let's say you got to talk to a realtor, you got to get pre approved, start seeing houses put an offer in, uh, right, get an accepted offer, inspection, whatever, title search, blah, 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 close on a property, right? Really quick overview about the home buying process. If you make a video on, here's what the things to look out for during an inspection. If they're already in the inspection phase, they probably have an accepted offer, meaning they probably have a realtor, meaning why on earth are you creating content for people that already have a realtor? You don't need two realtors to buy a property. Right, so a lot of people say, oh, this is very informational content. Like, this is good stuff. Like, oh, people are going to love this. And it's like, they might. But why would you make just waste your time doing that when they already are in the... It's like trying to get someone and they're already on a team. You need to get them all their free agents. Right? When they're free agents, you can still get to them first. You can still attract them. And if you know what questions they're asking or what questions they're thinking about and you answer them, before they can even type it in, like if you're the person that pops up, you're gonna be way ahead of the game. And all the realtors are talking about inspections and titles and all that stuff. Great information, but by the time you reach the person, the person's already, it's already too late. They already got an accepted offer and they already have a realtor on the team. Right, same thing with selling, right? Here's the top five things you can do after you sell your property. Great, they already sold their property. Why are you making videos for them? A waste of time. Right, so what questions are they asking? Not to be a little bit. So there's a, a tool called answerthepublic.com. If you haven't, I'll write it down. It's a free tool. And what it does, it, it pretty much aggregates all the Google searches for a specific keyword. So it's called answerthepublic.com. If you type in, let's say, first time home buyer, it will search up everything that people are looking for on that topic of first time home buyer and then rank it. For you, so I can show you guys why I'm going to in a little bit, right? And number three is roadblocks. Can't really see this right. Yeah. Boom, roadblocks. What's currently getting in the way of them buying the property, or selling their property, or getting an investment property? What are the things that are stopping them? Could it be that they're not making enough money? 
Could it be that loan payments start next month, meaning student loan payments start next month? Like what's getting in the way from them getting from where they are right now to that ideal result? All right. And so where they want to be over here, this is their right, their result. This marker sucks. Anyways, <laughs> result, like boom. So right now, Fred is over here. He wants to get over here. And this side over here, that's when Fred had his dream home. He, you know, he's no longer a renter anymore. He bought his first property. He's breaking that generational curse of renting. And this is where Fred wants to be. But as I said, there's a big gap in the middle. So when it comes to creating content, it gets pretty simple. I'm going to get another color really quick for me. When it comes to creating content, all you really need to do is you are the bridge. Right? That's it. How can you bridge the content? How can your content help bridge where they are right now to where they want to be? So if you're working with first time home buyers, you want to attract first time home buyers, is your content helping them get from where they currently are with no home, renting, losing money every month, paying 100% interest to being a homeowner, getting some equity, right? Building that generational wealth. And if your content isn't, then you gotta ask yourself, one, is it a personal post? If it is, then never mind. And if it's not, it's probably a real estate post, right? And if it's a real estate post, why are you posting it and it's not helping the people you want to help. What's the point? It's a waste of time. And the better you understand this person here, Fred, the better you understand how they think, the better you understand where they work, what do they do for a living, what do they enjoy doing, the easier it gets to come up with content. So another way, let me erase this. Actually, I don't need to. So what I did, so for you guys who don't know, I have a course, right? My first time I launched a course, right, it was going to be on how to build your online presence with podcast guesting. I thought it was going to be the best thing ever, right? I told you guys I hopped on a little over 100 podcasts um, between January and March. I interviewed a bunch of times. I was like, this is great. Brooks are going to love this. Launched my course, didn't go as well as I thought. Why? I thought I had a good idea. Valuable information wasn't what the people wanted. A lot of times we waste our time trying to make this content, trying to create these videos, trying to do these mailers, trying to do all these stuff. And we never stop to ask, like, do the people actually want what I'm certain? Do the people want a course on podcast guesting? What I had to realize is that no one did, right? So what I do, I didn't take it personally. I was like, all right, let me go to the drawing board. Let me figure out what people are actually looking for. So I probably called a little over 60 realtors. I got on Facebook polls. I started doing surveys. I started asking questions on my Facebook to figure out what are people going through right now that I can help with. It ended up coming down to six things. It's, I don't understand what to post. I don't understand social media. I don't understand technology. I don't like getting in front of a camera. I don't have the time. Or I just don't, I don't want to do it. Right? I know it's important, but I don't want to be the one that does it. Right? Those are the six main concerns that Rosie came up with. Took a lot of phone calls. So if you want to get a deeper understanding, for those of you that do the DTD2 call or stay in frequent communication with your um with your clients or class clients, right? Here's a little five questions you could ask yourself. Right. Question number one is when you're on the phone with them, what are your biggest struggles around? Fill in the blank. It could be Fred, it could be buying buying your first home, right? It could be selling your house for top dollar or selling your house for top dollar. Or you might have people that are getting a divorce, right? And then you have to sell a property, right? And what are your biggest struggles around? And then fill in the blank with whatever you help people with the most, right? Question number one. Question number two. Do you have any fears around fill in the blank? So I didn't know people were scared to pop in front of a camera. Like for me, it's like nobody's watching. Like it's just me and the camera. And it's a little awkward, but like I wasn't scared to do it. It's, I just started talking. It's a little weird at first, but I was never scared. I didn't realize that that was a fear until I started asking the people what they were scared of. Some people may be scared of owning a home. They may, may be scared of owning, you know, having debt. They may be scared, like, scared of selling because they lived there their entire life. I ask them, what fears do they have around whatever it is that you're trying to help them with? Question number three. Right. What are you currently doing to fill in the blank? What are you currently doing to buy that first home? What are you currently doing to get ready to sell your property? What are you get, you know, um, what are you currently doing to get ready to set the money exchange? Right. Whatever it is that you help people with. Question number four. 
in an ideal world, what does it look like when you fill in the blank? In an ideal world, what does it look like when you fill in the blank? And then the fifth question is, if I could wave a magic wand, if I could wave a magic wand, what would you need to get you from where you are to where you want to be? And if you guys caught wind of it, I'll repeat again. If I could wave a magic wand, um, what would you need to get you from where you are to where you want to be? It's essentially these five, these five things right here, right? What are you currently struggling with, right? That's the problems. What are your biggest fears, right? Those are kind of both problems and questions and roadblocks. What are you currently doing, right? This is pretty much them painting a picture for you as to where they are right now and where they need help with. Then where do they want to be? That's them painting a picture for you as to their ideal result, right? And then if you can make a magic wand, you're literally having them give you the answers for what they need to bridge the content, right? Now, if you get a deeper understanding, then everything that you do is going to be help people get from here to over here. And you're not going to have to under, like, worry about what do I post or what do I say, because you know exactly from the source what they're struggling with and what they need to get to the other side, right? So I'm trying to spend as much time as possible on this, mainly because if you don't do this, none of your stuff really matters. And it sucks to say, but we get over 13,000 marketing messages a day. So now, if you think that post that you spend 10 seconds creating on Canva, it's somehow going to magically keep all the 13,999 other posts that some people are spending thousands and thousands of dollars of marketing at, you know, an advertising budget behind. By all means, go for it if you think you're that good, right? But this is what everyone does. All these big corporations, like, you want to run a business, right? This is what businesses do. They spend time creating who, do, who they want to help and do everything humanly possible to have all their messaging, all their branding, all their marketing. Speak directly to this person and helping to get to the other side, right? And that's in every business and every industry. So spend a lot of time thinking, like, who is this person? What are they struggling with? How can I help them with? As I said, realtors don't care about podcasting, from what I found. Then take a person. What are they struggling with? How could I use that, what they're telling me, to create something even better to help them with what they actually want help on? Just because information is valuable doesn't mean it's relevant, right? Just because information is valuable does not mean it's relevant. And if it's not relevant, if I don't want to hear it. That's a little bit of my soapbox. I'm done with this. So back to the presentation. Right, where was that? Step number three, what's your goal? Right, what goal are you looking to accomplish? And I talked about this a little bit in race, so just kind of reiterating. But I have a prompt that specifically goes with this. So during my little break, I'll show you guys again how to use the prompt that I already created for you guys. So what are you looking to get out of chat GPT when you use it? Right? Number four, what's your style? I want to talk about this for a little bit. A lot of times we create content and the person that we show and reflect on social media isn't the person we see in the mirror. I'm going to say that again. A lot of times the person we reflect on social media isn't the person we see in the mirror. We get on social media and it's all, all of a sudden it's, hey everyone, I'm John Mendes and I'm here to show you the top three reasons why you need to sell your property today. And we start cold switching and we start presenting and projecting the person that we want people to view us at instead of you know really showcasing ourselves. Right. And so the only thing that's gonna differentiate yourself from everyone else in this business is you. Right? Bet on you. You are worth it. You you if you're gonna create content, your face is gonna be out there. Make sure it's the person that you actually are, not the person that you're trying to have people portray you as, right? that's not going to get you anywhere. And that's why people get burnt out because they hop on camera and every time they got to put on this face as to who I want people to view me as and not really who you are. And when you start talking as confidently and as comfortably as you normally do, turning on the camera gets a lot easier. Like you just hop on the camera, have a conversation, and boom. And then step number five, use the prompts. As I said, you guys are going to get all the prompts. So you're going to have to worry about this step. And then this is a two-parter. So... There's another prompt that goes with it. So step number five and six are using the prompts. And so that's step number two. Now I'm gonna stop my screen share really quickly. And I'm gonna need someone else to help me out. So I'm gonna need someone to guess a number from one to ten starting now. Four. Anyone? Three. Three. Oh, Perfect. My <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. 
Let me uh stop. That's super easy. Okay. So in the best as I said, you guys are gonna get all these prompts, right? In this list of prompts right here, somewhere along here. There we go. There's one called a creative marketing plan, and it perfectly goes with the steps we just followed, right? So all you have to do is it's two parts, right? There's this first part and this second part. Already created for you. You don't have to change anything, right? Mm -hmm. Don't try and reinvent the wheel. Boom. So you're just gonna copy this, go into chat GPT, start a new chat, right? And then from there, let's see. We're going to copy and paste this into chat GPT. Now, as I said, step number one is topics, right? So give me a couple topics in real estate that you specialize in. Give me like one or two. A couple of topics that I specialize in? Yeah. Or that you would like to talk about in real estate. Oh, um, well, definitely the first time babies. Okay. Definitely that. First time, home buyer tips. Right. And, and oh. That's good for now. Okay. And then let's say, give me a personal topic. Like, what do you like to do? Like, any personal passion topics you like to do? Travel, paint, photos? Yeah. Sure. Yes. Um, acting and travel. Acting. Boom. Okay. So we got a couple of pieces of content. These are what we call our pillars or whatever you want to call them. But our core topics, right? Now, for audience, I'm assuming since you're talking about first time home buyer tips. Yes. Um, first time home buyers. And you can get super like super high in depth in here. So like first time home buyers, average age like what, 34 years old. I do want to base, and this is not for mm -hmm. anybody, but I do want to base on my community on people of color. Yeah. Because it's kind of difficult. Yeah, of course. Boom. People of color and content goal to generate more buyer leads. Yes. And then writing style. How do you um I describe like yourself? You're fun? Yeah, I don't like the serious. Fun, energetic. Yes. Mm. Silly. <laughs> Silly. Boom. <laughs> And now, right, so you just fill in the brackets, right? As I said, prompts are already created for you. Just go in and fill it in. And you can get more in depth if when you have more time to demonstrate it. Demonstration purposes, of course. And then from here, create a one month marketing plan for a real estate agent specializing in helping people of color buy their home, first homes. Right. And then targeting my ideal client avatar, we just put in, break it down week by week and list out the specific days and time to post each week based on the best time to post for each day. Create one video per week, include content ideas to post in between. Right. I said this prompt is already created for you, but right? you hit enter and boom. Now it starts spitting out content ideas. So day number one. Right, day number one, Monday, 6 p.m., you know, a quick little introduction video. And on Tuesday, it gives you a little idea. Thursday, it gives you an idea. Saturday, another idea. Week number two, Wednesday, your next video, budgeting for your first home. Right, and then it'll give you content ideas for the rest of the week. And it'll do that for so on and so forth. Now, that was just for a random month. October's coming up soon, right? So we'll say, now, generate, a um a generate for the month of October. So before you go to the next month, yeah. So for all of those, like you're saying, you can get into okay. What does that specifically look like? Right? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. So if you would like, let's say you like this idea, cracking the home ownership code. You can say, hey, um, can you actually write me out the video script for week four video, right? And then from there. Now generate for the month of October. Boom. You right. create an avatar and you don't have to do anything. You just let the avatar yeah. do something. All right. So boom. So now what we got? We got fall into home ownership, right? Let's say you fixing trees, navigating the carry real estate maze, right? Cracking the home ownership code with a pumpkin slice. I don't know what that means, but sure. But as that, and you can keep on doing this forever, pretty much. You just sit down one day, take like 30 minutes, and 
in seconds, you can have, or minutes, you can literally have your next 12 months of content ideas pretty much already planned. As I said, like we, a lot of us have the problem with getting ideas out from our heads. Now we're gonna have a problem with choosing which ideas to run with. We're gonna have so many ideas. Like you could just keep on doing this over and over again until it pretty much um, you just can't think of, you know, can't even grasp all the ideas. But for a lot of you guys, or some of you guys that may be high C's or just like to be more organized, I said this prompt is a two-parter. So the second part of the prompt says format as a content posting table with four columns. Column one is date, column two is a social media post for the day. Column three is a fun, engaging caption with hashtags. Column four is an optimal time to post. Right? And then go copy and paste it word for word. Don't change anything. Don't reinvent the wheel. Mm -hmm. And then from there, okay. now we'll have the That's what I need to know. This one actually did it wrong. So this is a live example when chat GPT goes wrong. So I put the idea and the caption in the same one. Right. So not every now and then, I love that it messed up. It don't mess up. So I will tell Chat GPT, I'll scold it just like it was my kid. And I'll tell it, you did this wrong. Follow oh, this format now or else. <laughs> and then copy and paste it. Now, when Chat GPT takes over the world, I'm probably the first one gone. <laughs> All right, so it did it wrong again. Yeah. That's the ghost show. It doesn't always work out as actually as you, as you want it to. Um, let me see if I can get it this fourth time to charm. It's just being redundant. Yeah, it'll work either that fourth time. Was it was wrong, right? So it's putting a caption in um, in the idea in this post. But <laughs> instead of the caption. But as I said, long story short, you try and get it. Well, let me get it. There's that format. But when you go to do it, you don't have to put the. So here's one thing you can do, right? So now that it's messing up, right? So this is what I normally do, right? I'm just, I gotta be like on my toes, right? So I have ChatGPT. Do you understand? Oh. Right. I'm being so serious. I actually, actually. If so, please provide an example. So ChatGPT, right, it'll give you a response based off of what it term you to be saying. And so now ChatGPT, whatever reason can't understand that I just want four columns and follow my rules. So I'm gonna tell it to her, please provide an example, right? If it doesn't work out this time, then I'll tweak it live. So, right, it didn't work clearly. So I'll tell it, this is wrong. Here's how to format. Right, and then I will just pretty much write it out again. Column one is for the date. Column two is for the post of the day. Column three is for the caption. And then column four is for the time. So is that syntax important, like the period at the end of the book? Great question. So I think honestly it is. I actually haven't tested it or not, but I know we do it just because it uh it makes it easier to look at and change. So right. So pretty much I just hit shift and enter and like spaced it out so it's a little more clear. Um and then from there, I'll just copy and paste the last part of do you understand? Please provide an example, right? There we go. So now I've got it right. So, right, so okay. this is exactly how I work it through live. I always ask, if, if it doesn't get it right on the first time, do you understand? If so, provide an example. That way it doesn't go spitting out a full on list, right? I can only have a generate one. And then I say, this is perfect, right? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> right, this makes, it sounds funny. I'm telling you, it sounds weird. But, ChatGPT, it biases and answers based on the previous con the, the conversation. So when you say stuff like this, it'll make the conversation, it'll make ChatGPT a little bit more biased to now respond like this, right? Now generate the rest. And now from here, now this is how it's supposed to look, right? Date, idea, caption, time to post. 
Right. We're getting that right. But so that's pretty much how you that's how you become infinitely creative, right? Most of our time is spent trying to figure out ideas. Now our time we're gonna be figuring out which ideas we want to work with and which ideas we use as foundation to go deeper on, make it even better. Right? This is how you start generating more ideas, right? So any questions here before I get into part three? But when you say that it's learning from how you speak to it, is that going to affect how it phrases what it wants you to say? Like, if you don't end things with thank you, like, your responses aren't going to end. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, is it learning, like, your behavior? Yeah, your great question. Yeah, great question. So, whenever, let's say it gets something wrong and I have to tweak it, I always say, like, this is perfect things, right? But you don't have to do it after every single comment. If it's already getting it right, like, you don't have to do that at all. There's one time until you get it right for like now, boom, this is good to go. So like, let's say I want to run with this. Uh, what I would do, right? Boom, edit, hit, edit here, change the name to monthly content calendar, right? Or something I could easily remember. Now, every time I need a content calendar, boom, go in here. And if I really wanted to, I could probably charge realtors to make a landing page saying, hey, you want a monthly content calendar? I'll generate one for you in an hour, right? And then charge realtors for this, put it into the app and fill out a, a form that auto populates the chat you can see. Right, because you can get really fancy with this stuff. And when I mean fancy, ChatGPT integrates with Google Sheets. So I could make a Google form, have you fill it out, get into Google Sheets, then have my ChatGPT and Google Sheets generating content calendars for you. And right? that's how high level you can get. I could probably charge people for it, but that's not what I do it for. Right? I'm here to kind of teach you guys the game so you guys can do it for yourself and not have to pay anything. And right? that's the main reason why I teach all you like this. Question. Allison is a great that, that, That's too high level. <laughs> that, like, okay, I'll catch you up. Uh, that, that's like a like a like a thirty minute combination alone, like on that one thing plus me working through a laptop. I can even show you, but that's like, it gets high level real fast because you have to download the API key and get it onto all that techy stuff. Um, but yeah, any questions before we go into part three? So when you do something like that, yeah, you would just save that content calendar and you have one, like you'll set up your every single month and then you just. Every year, yeah. So, I mean, you could, yeah. Um, but by next year, there will be updated information. Yeah. To by next year, chat GPT, I don't know where it's going to be. Chat GPT might turn into a, a human, like as the way it's moving now. So, <laughs> I don't know where it's going to be for next year, but if you wanted to, I said you could just plan out the next year or just plan out a general rough content calendar for every month, and each month you go in there and kind of tweak or spin out the ideas. Um, but yeah. John, was this one of the prompts that you, did, um, that you were going to provide? Or yeah, it's in the Google Docs. Okay, okay. Yeah, so um, as a, it's a two-parter. So the first part is a topics, audience, whatever, whatever stuff, um, pillars. Um, and then the second part is turning into a column. And normally, it doesn't like act up it's because it's a pretty simple prompt. But you've seen how I work through it, right? You tell chat, you see that that's wrong. Tweak it to how you actually want it to be done. And ask it if it understands. And if it does... Provide an example. That way, instead of it creating a bunch of long lists, you just create a quick list and pick it, and then boom, open there. Good question. All right, so let's get into part three. Yeah, I'm doing pretty good on time too about that. We're pretty good on time. Um, is anyone in chat? So I feel bad. I haven't shown anyone in the chat in love. Mm -hmm. I only got my chat. Never mind. That was me. <laughs> All right, boom. So let's get back into this. All right. So now, secret number three. Hold on, there. I'm trying to get one for an hour. There we go. So, chat, uh, secret number three. I have never used a marketing agency again. Right? Time is the most important asset that we all have. Time is one of the only things here that can never be refunded, right? You'll never get any time back that's wasted. So where we spend our time is of the utmost importance, especially because a lot of us are wearing all the hats. So we have to juggle all these different things, right? And so what marketing agencies do, they'll sell you the dream, right? Oh my goodness, I'll save all your time to focus on your business. I'll post on your behalf. I'll post on your Facebook business page. And all it is is template of Facebook content or Canva content that goes on your business page. And all you guys probably already know, that stuff gets no likes, it gets no engagement. And so they say, they tell you this dream of they're going to post on your business, and they do, the content is there, like you see it. 
But what is it actually doing for your business? And people would charge five hundred a month, a thousand dollars a month, fifteen hundred a month, just to post content on their page that isn't generating any results. And so, on ChatGPT, you can pretty much eliminate all of those people that say, "I'm gonna take care of your content," and not that I'm trying to make them out of business, but for what they're charging you, you can spend one afternoon and have everything you need. And I'm about to show you that. So I'm going to go on a little bit of a soapbox. So stay with me. I'm going to get a little philosophical with you guys. So when you think of someone who's omnipotent, someone who's all powerful, right? You can measure power by the, dip, the, the time delay between when their thoughts become reality. So someone who's omnipotent, their thoughts and their reality are one and the same, right? So super deep. I'm, I'm making it make sense a little bit. So most people, now that we're using chat GPT, right? We have ideas. We have thoughts now. Where I guess most people is that delay between when they get the idea and when they actually go put it into play, when they implement it into their business, when they actually post the video. Most people actually don't have that, uh, a problem creating ideas, right? We'll get a good idea here and there, but implementing it is the hard part, especially when it comes to creating content because it's something that's not natural to a lot of us. It's something that takes a lot of reps because we can't chat GPT experience, right? So with chat GPT and Canva, you can now pretty much both create content in seconds, decreasing that time delay pretty much immensely. And so the only step to do this is to watch me work. So I'm gonna need someone to talk really quickly. And I'm gonna show you guys how to use Canva and ChatGPT to create more content than you would ever know what to do with. Now, quick disclaimer, right? This content, um, hold on isn't going to make you viral, right? This content isn't going to blow up your Instagram, but it's going to help you replace that $500 bill that you spend every month, right? On social media campaigns and marketing companies that don't really actually do anything for you, right? This is going to allow you to create content for the days that you're not feeling creative, days that you don't want to post, the days that you don't want to get out behind camera, do your makeup, do your hair, do whatever you got to do, right? This is going to help you create the content that gives you the freedom and the flexibility to create actual videos, good quality content. Because most people don't post because it's like they're the same way people live paycheck to paycheck, people are living post to post. And they're always on this constant hamster wheel of what's the next post. This is gonna help you create an abundance of posts so you never really have to worry. If you decide not to make your post today, it doesn't really matter. So what you're gonna need for this is you're gonna need chat GPT of course, right? And you're gonna need Canva, right? So I'm, this is going to go really, really slow because I might lose some of you guys, but the recording is out and I'm going to share with you guys my free course at the end that talked about this. Um, it's from my workshop I did back in June. But this was a six hour workshop that I pretty much kind of condensed down into two hours. Um, so follow along with me, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the step one and use the race format to pretty much create a little quick prompt. So I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it for Fred the first time home by it. So bro, you are now a um a social media marketing expert. That's R, right? Bro, action. I want you to create a list of tips helping first time. Oops. First time home buyers learn about the home buying process. Action. So we got the role, we got the action. Step number three, context. I am a licensed licensed realtor and good. <laughs> I'm, I'm a realtor in Atlanta <laughs> and I've been licensed, let's say five years. I've been in the business <laughs> five years, right? Um, right, context. If you look at the context about who your business, I specialize in helping first time buyers. And then expectation, my goal is to generate more engagement on my social media. Boom. So that's a quick race formula, right? Roll, roll, action, 
context, and expectations, right? Nice and simple. Now I'm gonna hit enter. And so now hopefully it'll start creating tips. Boom. Now it's, you know, giving me a bunch of tips. So this is, so here's another thing where I went wrong. So it gave me tips on social media, not tips to help people. So I, like I said, we'll work through this live. This is wrong. I want you to create a list of tips for first time home buyers. Help educate them on the home buying process. Now remember what I said. Do you understand? If so, provide an example. Right. Boom. So I'm gonna budget, save for a down payment, check your credit score, pre approval. There we go. So now we got a list, right? Now we got a list. Now we say now generate a list of 30 tips. So I'm gonna reiterate all the steps. So step number one, right? I went on chat GPT, started a new conversation. Step number two, I used the race format to get ChatGPT to create a list of tips for me. Step number two B, I had to tweak a little bit because I didn't pay attention the first time, right? Now let's, we have a list of ChatGPT prompts here, right? Or chat uh, home buying tips here. So step number three, we're gonna create a table, similar to what we did last time. So I'm gonna say, now turn this into a table, right? Column one, now put this little dash, column one is topic, column two, home buying trade. Right, so I'm turning it into a, a table just to make it a little bit more organized and easier to copy for when I get into Canva. Right, so I turn it into a, a table, hopefully it gets it right in the first try. Boom, golden, got it good. So right, we have a table on the left-hand side is the topic, Right hand side, right, is the actual tip. So what we've done so far, when I chat GPT, start a new conversation, use the race format to generate a list of home buying tips, and then three, turn it into a table. Right, so that's what we do for chat GPT. Here's where we get into Canva. So this is probably one of those things where you're gonna need to rewatch it over and over again, right? But what I'm gonna do here is copy this entire list, right? Copy this entire list. There we go. Now, step number four go into Canva. So, you want to have two tabs open for this, right? One's ChatGPT, one's Canva. So, what we're going to do is, is in the search bar, we're going to look up Instagram Reel. Right? Instagram Reel. Now, in Canva, it should say Creative Lane Reel. So on camera, go to Instagram Reel, create a blank reel. Boom. So now it has this set for five seconds. You can leave it at five seconds. The length for the purpose of this example doesn't really matter. So I'm not going to touch it and we'll leave it at five seconds. Right. All you need to do from here is where it see templates. So under the design portion up here in Canva. All right, you'll see templates. Now, I usually type in something along the lines of real estate tip, and then I'll get something that pops up like similar to whatever these are. And now from here, I just find something that I like. Hmm. This one looks decent enough. So, right, I'm gonna reiterate this. This work gets a little complicated here, right? Once we're on Canva, create a blank temp, uh, a blank template for Instagram Reel. Find a random design that we like. And then from here, the starts getting a little fancy, right? In Canva, you can use apps, right? On the left-hand side of Canva, there's a thing that's called apps. You go to apps, and then you're gonna search up something that says bulk create, bulk create. Now, most people don't know about it because the actual symbol for it looks really boring. And compared to everything else, 
you wouldn't think that this symbol over here has any actual use case, right? But it does magic, right? So you click on both create. Now what that allows you to do is that table we just created with ChatGPT, now we're gonna put that into Canva. So we're gonna enter data manually. And right? once we hit both create, this will pop up. We're gonna enter data manually. Clear this really quickly. And then boom, we're gonna copy and paste. Remember, column one was topic, right? So we're just gonna name it again. Topic. And then tips, right? So as I said, we just copied and pasted this directly from the list that Chad should be creating, right? Then we're gonna hit done. Here's where it gets a little tricky, right? Where it says real estate, right? And this could be whatever. Um, this is just the template that I'm using right now. Um, oh, whoopsies. You're gonna right click on it, and where it says connect data, then connect the top of it. Boom. All right, where you see you're gonna right click, right? And then where it says connect data, you can click on top of it, right? And then for the gibberish in the middle, you're gonna right click that, connect data, and then click on tips. And I'm gonna move this up a little bit. Probably like lower the font. Right? So once we do this, right, the data is connected, right? The list, the tips that we got is connected to Canva now. And now from here, let us say generate. And then it's going to create just like that 30 little Instagram reels for you to post. Mm -hmm. So, boom, evaluate your financial post. I can't see this on the screen. We should have probably, I can't see this either. <laughs> so, here's a simple page, right? We go back, and now we're just going to move this a little lower. All right, and let's say, we're gonna add some effects here. Are you gonna make this pop off the screen a little bit? Boom. And then we're gonna hit go generate again. This is me tweaking the font. There's nothing too fancy. Boom. Now you could see it more. Evaluate your financial health, as if your income, expenses, debts, and savings. And so now for all the tips that we created, we now have 30 videos here. Right, all of these videos across here. But we don't want one big video, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit share, download, and then download a separate file. And now you're gonna have 30 individual um, reels for you to actually be able to upload on all your different social media channels. So whenever you get busy or you know, you know you're gonna be busy and you have some downtime, you could just in one sitting. Literally create this and have your rest of your month content family. Now, quick disclaimer, bulk create is only available on Canva's free plan. Canva app offers a free seven day trial. So you can get a free Canva trial and in those seven days make more content than you can ever imagine and then cancel before you ever pay anything. <laughs> and then use Metricool, which is another tool that you guys may like to use. M-E-T-R-I-C-O-O-L, Metricool. Mm -hmm. It's a social media schedule. Say one more time, M-E. M -E T R I C O O L. It's a social media schedule. And then you can use a tool like that and then take all these videos, schedule it out for the next however long you want to set your schedule out for. And then, as I said, most of the times so we don't get started because we're living post to post, right? Now you have more than enough posts that you probably know what to do with right now. And so you'll schedule this out. And if you have a VA that supports it, amazing. Right, because you can just have them do this and schedule all this stuff. And in the days where you actually want to sit down and create something special or create like a really big video, you have the time to do so. Because if you don't post today, you're good. For my podcast, I repurpose that into clips, right? So for right now, if I never did another podcast interview, right, I'm good until January. Now, if I take all those individual podcasts and turn those into individual clips, I'm good to God knows how long, right? I never have to worry about creating content anymore for that. And it's like, once you have an abundance of content, that's where your creativity can open up. That's when you have the opportunity to make a video or take a day off and not post for a week and not post for a month. And you just schedule it out and you're good. So back to that little philosophy change I was talking about, the omnipotence 
Now your thoughts become reality. With all these chat GPT ideas that generated, now the stuff you can download and post on your social media now. There's no time delay anymore. So um, for the most part, that's pretty much it for part number three. Any questions there before I get um that's pretty much it for the most part. Yeah. Did you say the folks not available on the thing before? No, it, it is. It is not Yeah, so it's not available on the free. So yeah. I'll just finish up really quickly now. I'm open up the yeah. QA and we're gonna believe it on the last so mm -hmm. Right, so creating content, as I said, used to be hard. Hopefully by this last hour and a half, little hour and 40 minutes, a little easier. Hopefully I help you guys figure out how to start creating this content. Of course, you guys are gonna have to replay all this. So um, don't think about it too much. As I said, my goal is to make this whole content process easier for you guys. Because to be honest, I don't want to create content for nobody. So if I teach you guys how to do it, you guys bother me like, I'm joking. <laughs> But I really, like I said, I want you guys to be able to get comfortable on front of the camera. I want you guys to start impacting more people. The more people you get, the more time you get online, the more people you get in front of, the more lives you can impact, and the more money you can save. Because as I said, after this, why could the agency go out of business? At least the bad ones, right? All the people promising you, you know, $500 a month for the Canva post, that's out the window now. Right now that you guys know this, you just sit wet for one weekend, right? You get the Canva trial, by the end of the weekend, came to the trial and be on your way with all this content, right? And so that's how you never use a marketing agency ever again. This is what we talked about today. And so I know for a lot of you guys, let me ask you, do you guys feel anything similar to this? <laughs> <laughs> and you'll be super overwhelmed in this chat and stuff. I kind of went over here quickly. Uh, as I said, this is a six hour workshop that I kind of condensed down into two hours. Uh, so, Here's the free access to the course. Huh? I'm gonna go over a lot slower. Yeah, and break it down where I'm asking details of what's over here and there. But yeah, but this is um so this is the actual workshop that I saw back in um in June. I had about 350 books to sign up for it. I said each day I talk for a little bit and then I walk through a live with someone, um, like just like I did just now, and then I had an hour of QA afterwards. So I did that for three days straight. So if you want access to the free chat GPT course, pretty much what I talked about today, just a lot slower and less rushed. And uh, I took out a lot of the fluff in between. Um, yeah, this is the free course. Now, pretty much, we have a lot of time to make sure to give us some ample time to get into Q&A, because I know the last part specifically, I tend to lose a lot of people. So any questions as to anything we talked about for chat GPT or any of the, if you're interested in other AI tools that you might have heard, but you didn't know, don't know much about. So, um, I'm curious about the you, you talked about uh, with the um, the podcast and how you can break that down into reels. Mm -hmm. I think. So That's how I bring my podcast down to reels? Is that another? Uh, yeah. I'm using? So, what do you want me to recommend? How I would use it for you? No, I'm saying uh, right, yeah, we really use it to, to do that. So. so for he's pretty much asking how do I take my long form videos, podcasts, mm -hmm. right, and turn it into clips so I can redistribute it to everywhere. So um quick disclaimer, everyone said that our attention spans have gotten shorter, complete myth, complete BS. People still binge watch Netflix, people still go to the movies, people still, you know, watch shows for I, I watched, I don't know if you guys are on Netflix, I watched Soups. Like a couple months ago, <laughs> I was on scoops. Like, no, every every day I'm about to do Like, like Harvey Specter and all them people. Like every day, right? It's not that our attention span has gotten shorter; it's that our level of standards have gotten higher. So anything that sucks, people are just gonna scroll past. Mm -hmm. Like, if it's good, it'll keep us watching. It'll keep us watching for a long time. So, for anyone that doesn't feel like they should get into long form. Either way, you're still gonna be good whether you do short form or long form. I like long form just because on a return on investment on my time, I can focus on making one longer video and then use that to repurpose in the shorter video. So I just want to preface that before I answer it. So how I actually use these um and I'll show you guys just because we have yeah, I think it's extra early. You mind if I you guys all scan this? Yeah. Oh, please. Okay, perfect. I'm gonna show you guys what I actually use. Um Really quickly to create. So this tool is called Video AI. V I D Y O dot AI. Video AI. 
Let me just see if I'm live anyway. Actually, they hosted a meetup in New York City. Um, I went to their very first meetup. So got to meet the CEO. Nice yeah. little uh, sidebar, but uh, just to show you guys in the pool. And what I do right is when I have a long form video, whether it's a podcast or whether it's a YouTube video that I post, I import the video into here. Right. So how you do that? It's pretty simple. You hit import video, and then if you have the file on your computer, you just upload the file. Or if you already uploaded it to YouTube. You literally copy and paste the YouTube link. So you hit the browse files, upload it, start import. Uh, right. Upload one file. Right. And then this is just to personalize a little bit. You just literally hit done. So all I do is import video, click on the video I want to import, and then I pretty much just hit done. And then it'll start loading up over here. Once it's ready, right. Um, what is, let me do this. So this is from the workshop. So this one is when I actually got the, the real workshop, right? Back in June. So this is my work for you guys that do home buyer seminars. It's a little bit weird with Zoom calls, but I just uploaded the file. I don't know if you guys can see over here, but um, then you can't see it. But I created 41 shorts. So from day one of my workshop, I created 41 shorts. I think in day two, I created like 60. And then day three, I created 60. Now, not all of them came out perfect, right? But if, even if 10% of those came out good, right? That's four, six, another six, 12, 16. That's 16 clips right there that I could post and schedule out, right? And now I have content. This is how you build up that content calendar, right? That content safe, right? You make the long form videos, then you repurpose it. And then from there, this tool, if you're on the page, uh, so I'm on a paid plan, you don't need to be on a paid plan to use it. It's a free plan that's available to anyone. Um, the reason I like the paid plan personally is because on a paid plan, you can set up a template. And so you create the template one time, then all the videos you kind of created in that one template. So you don't have to keep on recreating your branding and everything, right? It's just kind of all ready to go. On top of that, you can also create um, a caption. So it'll generate a caption for you for different platforms. Okay. Oh, this, this little thing is away. But um, here, it'll generate a caption for you based on a different platform, right? You should be able to minimize the, uh, on the left, the left, right here? the left corner. Yeah, that would be cool. Right, and then it'll let you create captions for you, right? You can do one for Facebook, you can do one for LinkedIn, YouTube, whatever, whatever. Right. And then also from in here, now I don't use this, I don't use Metropole. You could also now in a paid plan, you could post from within here. So you can schedule out posts from within, within here on one tool. So that's what I use to clip my content into um shorter clips when I'm on, you know, I'm on go. So does that AI, I mean, I know it does it on its own, but it's yeah. It's going through the video and it's just picking out pieces that it yeah is, I guess rather than on whatever it's doing. yeah pretty much it'll go out and it, it updated recently so my most recent video on YouTube not my most recent my second class recent video so this feature wasn't always in there but it, it gave it started it's not going to give you a score based on how well the things it can rank right and now it doesn't mean that you're going to go viral it just means that it may perform a little bit better than the other clips right so now as we start generating clips instead of Trying to figure out all of you know which one's the best out of all of them. Like this video, I think it's pretty solid choice. Right? I don't, I don't even post all 12 because some of them are like sometimes it's like repeats. So I would just create the ones that um use the one that have the highest score. We use that. And that's how I probably base it off. There's three other tools, right? There's three main tools that all do the same thing. I use video AI. The other two that are pretty good is Get Munch and Opus Clip. They all do the same exact thing, they just have different branding and different names for the most part. But they all kind of essentially do the same thing. I like video AI just because for me it's seamless. The other much is a little bit more pricey. I don't think they have a free plan. What is yeah. it called? One more time? What is it called? Oh, get munch. Get munch. Get munch. And then um Opus, O P U S clip. They're all pretty much alternatives to the same thing, but this is the one I prefer. So now with all of those various clips, you would then schedule those uh, yeah. through Metro Pool. Yeah, I'll show you guys that too. 
I've been slacking a little bit this month, not gonna lie, you guys. So here's the problem with creating content. You still have to post. <laughs> so you know, you still have to upload it, which is the annoying part. Uh, let me see if I can log in. <laughs> so now you have more content that you know what to do with, and none of it's gonna upload itself. So um let me see if I can sign in really quickly here. All right, so this is how Metrico looks like once you're in. So it'll show you all like your analytics and stuff, and it'll show you for like further different platforms, etc., that you're connected to. And then you'll go to planning. And so from in planning, it'll give you the best time to post based on your specific audience, right? The people who actually follow you and watch your content, not just random surveys on Google and you know on random stuff. It'll base it off of the time of day that people watch your content. Right, so the darker the color, the better um, the time to post. And so from there, you just click. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, where is where does it create? There we go. Create new post, and then you could post it to all your different platforms, right? And then I'll copy a video from Video AI. Video AI also creates a caption, so I'll just copy and paste the caption into here, and then schedule it out. So that's how I do it. That I just decided it's not gonna lie, but so when you say copy and paste it to URL, no, so when you video? say from video AI, oh yeah, so from video AI, download to your computer, oh, download it, okay. and then uh, and then enter here, yeah. No question. Yeah, when it when it uh posts to different platforms, yeah, it's going to I guess format the video for a real versus shorter. So that's the only thing it doesn't do, right? So with video AI though, you can download two versions. And one has the long form version, and one has like a one by one version, the prayer version. And so you can just download two versions of the same video on video AI um, and then upload both, both versions and have one enough specifically um, for depending on the platform, like Facebook and LinkedIn, like one by one, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube Shorts, like the, on the vertical format. So uh, you would just download two versions of video AI and then upload them like that. Um, but yeah, good question. <laughs> Oh, another question, uh, disclaimer, sorry. When it comes to posting, right, if you schedule out your post, it's gonna get less than good, right? Just want that everyone to be clear. Like, it's going to perform worse if you schedule it out. But it's a situation where you gotta pick your poison. Schedule it and get less engagement or never post at all because you don't have the time and you keep forgetting to. So it's like, do you want to post it at all or do you want to post it and get a little less engagement? The choice is up to you, but as that, more, even influencers use social media schedulers because honestly, posting manually every single day or every time you have a piece of content, life happens, you know, life be life, in, as they say. And uh, most of the time, you don't have time to every day post consistently. So just whatever, as I said, like the Canva content that you create, those, those little videos are perfect. The little video AI clips, perfect for scheduling now and stuff like that. And when you have free time, you're going to do a little bit of something more simply, I'll do it manually. But yeah. Any other questions? So with these different social media platforms, like you know, Instagram, Facebook, all, is there a don't they have where you have you have to go into your settings and change something? Because a lot of stuff that you post, you only have like seconds of it. You know, it won't do a whole. Um, I mean, is that something that's within your you search? Yeah. Now your reels are short. Of course, yeah. So the rules are only but like, have you okay? Have you found where there's any AI stuff that you have to post to your social media and it didn't either come through all the way, yeah, or it was short, or the something stopped, or did you have That's any problems question. with that? So when I upload into Metrical, Metrical has um, and let's say I upload a video into Google um, into Google My Business, so you can for Metrical, a little red triangle pop up in Metrical. I'm not sure how. Other social media schedules work, but it'll tell you what's wrong. So, and then you can just tweak it right then and there, and then Metrical, once it's corrected, you can then upload it from there. Oh. So yeah, Metrical helps out with that. For example, a like YouTube video, like if you need to, if you want to post a YouTube short, you have to create a title for that video. Let's say you just try to upload the video without a title, and Metrical won't allow you to upload it until you want this. So that's kind of been a little bit of a help for me. Thank you.
I want to show you guys one last thing since someone else has any questions, but you guys only have questions. So if you guys scan the QR code, right? You will probably get landed on a website. Let me see if I have it up here. Uh, so if you land it on, is this the one? Yes. On this, um, if you scan a QR code, you probably landed on this little landing page right here, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. In this video, I want you to pay careful attention to my eyes and where I'm looking at. Yeah, so I'm gonna hit play. Pay attention to where I'm looking at. The sound doesn't matter, so don't worry about the sound. So now, would it surprise you that when I actually recorded this video, I didn't look at the camera once? Oh, and, I used, look at my and I used AI to put my eyes on the camera? What? Uh, stop it. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so you know what? <laughs> so here's how I did it, right? So you can see it right there, right? Right there, the AI didn't catch it, right? Um, but the entire video, I used ChatGPT create a video script, right? And then I looked at my camera, at my script while my camera was recording, and I just read it word for word. And there's a tool called Dscript, D E S C R I P T, Dscript. There's a free plan for that as well, right? See, right there, I think I got, I got it again. But Dscript, pretty much, it's a video editor tool. So, how many of you guys are familiar with Dscript? Right. D script. D script. Yeah. D script. D script. And then, so if you guys are familiar with Google Doc, the way D script works is that it'll allow you to edit your videos like a Google Doc. So normally, when you're editing a video, let's say there's a part like uh, that you messed up on, you have to clip it, you have to clip the other part, you have to delete this part, and then you have to move the video together. Right? That's normally how you edit a video whenever you mess up. Right? With D scripts. Whenever you upload a video, it'll provide a transcription. So when you want to delete a clip, let's say you had a mistake, you would just highlight that portion, just like a Google Doc backspace, and it'll delete the corresponding part in the video. So no longer do you have to like clip and cut and try to mix it back together so it's aligned and on time and that the cut looks well. You literally just highlight it like it's a Google Doc backspace, and then it'll pretty much go together, right? So. Dscript helps me with that, so that's how I do all my editing on my computer at least. The video's done, but um, then I, I use that, and then I click on the AI eye tracker tool, and then it literally, as you can see, it had my eyes go from looking directly down to entirely on camera the entire time. And then all the parts where you added B roll, I just told my video editor to add any like clips or photos whenever, whenever the AI didn't catch it. So now, if you have an editor, now you never actually have to look at a camera. Now the tool isn't perfect, but with a little bit of B-roll footage, you can just cover the part that it doesn't track or doesn't pick up on. And now you can look at, you start creating content, even if you're scared of creating a camera, you never gotta look at the camera anymore. Yeah. Boom, yeah. start pumping out videos <laughs> and just have these script, um, use the AI tool, put your eyes on camera. Wow. Ever. Which tools do you use for voice over? Like, Great question. I haven't messed around with that because I don't want people tracking my voice. So, long story short, I mean, my podcast is already out in public, so if someone wanted to track my voice, they could very much do so. Um, so, I guess, you know, um, I'm still screwed anyways. Um, but for the most part, I haven't done it. So, um, if you get an AI sounding message, that's me. It wasn't me. I uh, just know that. But there's 11 labs. 11 labs for AI voiceover is probably the best one. I'll spell it 11. 11. 11. Labs. I forget if it's the, the number 11 labs or the 11 word labs. Um, but one of those two is 11 labs. 11 labs are probably like running the game right now in the AI voiceover space. So pretty much you could train it on your voice. And if you put in a prompt, it'll then generate a voiceover in your voice. And so now let's say you really don't like getting on camera, right? I'll show you a little something. Let me see if I can figure out how to move this. Um, so you said you, you don't really use this? I don't personally not. Um, and you can just, so there's a tool called the Zombie AI. Um, Zombie AI. 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 Zombie AI
Now, I don't normally, I don't use this normally because yeah. I said I don't mind getting on camera and getting a video. But for people who are a little bit more shy or a little bit more um, introverted and don't like really getting on camera, um, where is it? You just create a free account. Let me log in really quickly. Um, and I'm going to read this last thing because I'm going to be right at seven o'clock. So I'm going to leave you guys with this. Right? So, in design that AI is to text the video, right? So I go in and design that AI, create a free account, right? I sign up with my Gmail, and it says create video content. So I'll click on that, right? And then from here, where it says new draft, I'll click on that. Now I'll give your video a title. Let's work with bread. How to buy your first home without a down payment. Boom, something that sounds catchy, that sounds sparks some interest. Now what we can do is go back to ChatGPT. Where is the real estate video we talk about? All right, write out a script for a video in week one. All right, so now it's gonna write out a script for me. Hopefully it does it pretty quickly. We're gonna it on time. All right, and now when you're actually copying this into the, in, into the thing, you want to, um, you don't wanna have all these different things like setting the tones and the title and stuff like that. Um, so I'm gonna say, only create a script for the words in the clip, right? And there we go. So boom, we're copying that. Then I'm going to design that AI, and I'll let's see. Yeah, I'll copy the script, right? And then pick an end screen message. Let's see, like and share. And then from here, I'll hit this green next button right here. Let's say select the industry. I think real estate's in here somewhere. Yeah, real estate, boom, hit next. It chooses a language for you, so you can choose from a bunch of different language. Let's say, let's say Japanese. <laughs> right and then we'll hit next and then from there now i'll start generating a video so let's say you want to speak to the japanese market um this will take a couple settings all right let me show you what it comes up with And now let's see this out. Can I take audio or no? Hold on. I think I need a. Let me try share my screen really quickly. This one. Hey there, future homeowners. Are you ready to make your homeownership dreams a reality? Well, I've got fantastic news for you. Welcome to the October Home Buying Kickoff. Setting the tone, 0 時20分、0時45分ホスト、October is the perfect time to start this journey, and we are here to guide you every Step of the way. Whether you are a first time home buyer, a couple looking for that perfect place to call home, or someone ready to make a change, this month is all about you. So I'll pause it for now, but you get the picture, right? Yeah. So, huh? Is it free or? This one's free as well. Oh. This one's called designs.ai. 
So for us, those guys that are, don't want to get on camera, you can hop on design that AI. And the scary part is that soon there's going to be an AI tool. I don't know how soon. We're in just a one-stop shop and we can do everything you want. Right? As I said, that, that lay between my thoughts and become reality yeah. is just going to get shorter and shorter as these AI tools progress more and more. So that's pretty much it for the entire presentation. Thank you guys so much for holding um, <laughs> You know, I'll enjoy it. Oh, yeah, can we take a group picture? Oh, yeah, let's take a group picture. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> now you blow my mind every single time. Every single time. Yeah, I only live 40 minutes down the road. You want to come by and give me the photos? <laughs> Take me out for lunch on Friday. I need to play. I need Friday and evening. I'm here for a while. I'm here for a while.